Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Vidyati, a student of Master, uh, Master Accounting Program of Dipanagara University. It's a wonderful and precious chance for me to be your Master of Ceremony on Tuesday, 7 of April 2022, in our big event for celebrating Natalis. It is an uh, international uh, webinar series. I'm um, sorry, it is international webinar series, corporate philanthropy in the US stock market. It will be delivered by Professor George Iatifris, the professor of accounting and finance at the Department of Economic University of uh, Thessaly. First of all, let's say thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has been giving us guidance, happiness, healthy, and mercy so we can attend to pers and participate in this event without any obstacle. Praise and salutation upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Ramadan Mubarak, I wish you a blessed and prosperous Ramadan. In this beautiful moment, I would like to welcome Professor George Iatidris, who will be the speaker at our event today. The Honorable Mr. Puji Hartanto, S.A.M.S.E., Ph.D., A.K.T., A.K.T., C.A. as our moderator today, the Honorable Mr. Fuad, S.A.T., M.S.E., Ph.D., Head of Economic and Business Department of Dipanegoro University, the Honorable Mr. Surya Raharja, M.S.E., Ph.D., Head of Master Accounting Program Department of Dipanegoro uh, University. And once again, we thank for all your presence in this seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin this event, let us pray together. My Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make this event benef uh, beneficial for all of us. And this event can, uh, can run smoothly and conductively. Start praying. And finish. On this special event, we have several agendas. So allow me to read several sequence of our agenda. Uh, the first is the opening, which we previously had read together. The second is welcome speech. The third is the main event, the seminar itself. The last is the closing and prayer. Step on the following, uh, following agenda is welcome speech. Ladies and gentlemen, I immediately invite Mr. Surya Raharja, MSE, PhD, Head of Master Accounting Program, Department of Unif uh, Diponegoro University, to give his uh, remarks and continue for the opening seminar. Please welcome Mr. Surya. The floor is yours. Thank, Thank you. you, Widi. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to extend our special welcome to Professor Yatrijis. Thank you, Professor. And also, I, I, I also would like to welcome all our honorable guests and participants today, uh, Dr. Fuad, our colleagues from Universitas di Ponegoro, lecturer from Universitas di Ponegoro, from APSI, and from other universities. And also to all students from Universitas Ponogoro and other students. Uh, today it is an uh, international webinar, yeah, uh, and it is part of our program. Uh, this year or last year, uh, to be precise, uh, Magister Akuntansi Undip got an international accreditation from FIBA A. And this is a start actually for us to be uh, giving more effort and strive for international exposure. And once again, we are very grateful and uh, thanks for Professor Yatidis. And this semester actually, Professor Yatidis have talked at our program uh, for <coughs> accounting theory. And this is a significant contribution for our international exposure. And we are very much appreciated. And we hope uh, we can enhance collaboration uh, with uh, Professor Yatidis in the future. 
for example, for research, emerging market, or for exchange program. And for all participants, today is not just seminar because this seminar actually um, presented presenting empirical research. So we are not only learn about corporate philanthropy, but there are some aspect in terms of data and methodology. And yeah, to conclude my welcoming speech, yeah, uh, I'd like to um, uh, wish all of the participants uh, enjoy and hope that today's seminar inspires uh, idea, insight, and knowledge for our study. Thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Surya Raharja, MSc PhD, Head of Master of Accounting Program Department of Diponegoro University for opening this seminar. Uh, let's keep on the next uh, agenda. Main event that seminar will be delivered by Professor George Iatribris with Mr. Pujiharto, um, uh, SAMSE, PhD, AKT, CAS, our moderator today. Yeah, Mr. Puji Hartanto, uh, Harto SAMSE AKT PhD is a lecturer in the Department of Accounting, Faculty, uh, Faculty of Economics and Business University, uh, Universitas Diponegoro, Indonesia. Uh, currently, he serves as the Deputy Head of Matter, uh, Master Accounting Program, UNDIP. Previously, he served as the uh, Head of Accounting Profession Education Study Program, or PPAK. Uh, he obtained his PhD degree 2012 in financial reporting from the University Sense Malaysia, Master of Science uh, in Accounting degree 2001 from University Gajah Mada, and his undergraduate degree 1998 in accounting from Universitas Diponegoro. His current research focuses on corporate governance, sustainability disclosure, intellectual capital, and financial reporting quality. He currently teaches several subjects such as uh, accounting theory, financial statement analysis, advanced financial accounting, and uh, scientific writing. And uh, let's start our seminar. And Mr. Puji, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Mbak Widi. Uh, is my voice uh, clearly heard, Mbak Widi? Okay. Uh, very good afternoon for Prof. George Yadridis, our respectable speaker for today's webinar. And also uh, good afternoon for Mr. Fuad as uh, the head of accounting department program at Faculty of Business and Economics, University Universitas of Diponegoro. And then also uh, good afternoon, Pak Surya, as the head of uh, Master of Accounting program at our faculty, Faculty of Business and Economics. And also uh, good afternoon for ladies and gentlemen, lecturers, students, and all the participants who already joined to this webinar. Today, uh, I'm delighted uh, to be a moderator for this webinar because uh, we have a great speaker today, uh, Professor George Yadridis. And actually, uh, I'm becoming in the teaching partner of uh, Prof Yadridis for the accounting theory course at the Master of Accounting program. But we never uh, directly <laughs> meet uh, Prof Yadridis. Uh, Prof Yadridis, uh, welcome to our seminars. It has been an honor for us to have you to join to this seminar. So uh, uh, for the introduction, I would like to uh, read on the brief CV of Professor George Idaitridis. Allow me to share the screen. Um,
Okay, have you seen the screen yet? Yes, Father Chief. Okay. Uh, professor George Eatridis is a professor of accounting and finance at the Department of Economics, the University of uh, Thessaly, Greece. And he is the head of the Department of Accounting and Finance and the director of the MSG in accounting and auditing. Uh, Prof. Eatridi studied accounting and finance uh, at postgraduate level at the University of Manchester uh, when, where he obtained his PhD degree and also he graduated from the Southampton University uh, when he obtained his Master of Science uh, program degree. And before that, uh, he studied at the economics at the University of Athens, Greece. And at uh, right now, Professor Eatris has a very good experience to talk at the any level of undergraduate master and expert program in accounting. He has a talk at the London School of Economics, University of Manchester, Cork University, and several uh, renowned university at the global level. And also, uh, in terms of the research, Professor Eatridis is also serve as associate editor at the International Review of Financial Analysis Journal. This is the outstanding journal based on Elsevier publisher and also at the Emerging Market Review. And he has published more than 50 research paper uh, to name uh, some of them. International Review of Financial Analysis, International Journal of Accounting, Auditing and Taxation and many more. I cannot uh, read one by one. Uh, you can see for yourself. And also uh, Professor Iatritis uh, co-edited a special issue in the International Review of Financial Analysis. And he also published uh, chapters in edited books. And his current research interests uh, mostly relate to the economic consequence of implementation of international financial reporting standard. So uh, for all the participants who are interested to this topic, uh, you can also uh, contact him and can uh, read and the papers from the published journal. Also a topic about accounting policy choice, policy choice and earning quality and earning conservatism. This is uh, uh, some interesting topics yeah, actually in accounting. And uh, Professor Edatitis also successfully supervised uh, six PhD thesis at University of Thessaly, International School of Management, and Maastricht School of Management. And in, in terms of the participation in the profession, uh, Professor Edatitis has participated in Greek Accounting and Auditing Oversight Board and also as a deputy chairman of the Greek Accounting Practice Board. He has been a member of Greek Certified Public Accountant Exam Committee. Also, he occupied as a member uh, in the Greek Accounting Standard Board, Committee for Accom Company Accounting Book and Record, and International Standard on Auditing Translation Committee. Uh, and now, he is a component leader at the twinning project between the Greek Accounting and Auditing Oversight Board and Georgian Agency of Accounting Reporting Auditing Supervision. Wow, this is this list is very very outstanding, yeah. And then uh, before we give the opportunity to Prof. Idris, allow me also to read uh, some guidelines for all the participants. Uh, first, the this presentation by the speaker is being recorded and live streamed. And during the presentation, we would like strongly encourage encourage you all the participant all the participant to stay mute to uh, your Zoom and during the presentation until uh, call upon. Also, uh, you can turn on camera and use Zoom virtual background that has been shared and. In, we also encourage you to rename the Zoom account in the format of your name and institution name. And next, uh, during the question and answer process, uh, participants can write the comment 
or question in the meeting chat, or if you want to directly uh, ask the speaker, you can click uh, raise hand. And we will share the link for attendance uh, during the question and answer uh, session. And only participants who have already filled up the attendance form will receive a certificate. And we would like to <coughs> distribute all the e-certificate immediately after the end of webinar. And of course, it will take time and we need uh, approximately 24 hours. Yeah? And please, uh, you can respect uh, all other participants. And lastly, uh, enjoy the presentation. Okay, uh, that's all on the guideline for the participant. Uh, now, without further ado, I would like to uh, I would like to <coughs> give uh, time and screen for Professor George Iatridis to present uh, his paper and the uh, title of uh, his uh, talk is about corporate philanthropy in the U.S. stock market: evidence on corporate governance, value relevance, and earnings manipulation. And this topic actually uh, taken from the publication from the journal in International Review of Financial Analysis. Okay, uh, without further ado, uh, <coughs> uh, Prof. George Ayatridis, uh, time and screen is yours. <coughs> you still mute, Prof? You can uh, turn on. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm now share my screen. Yes. Okay. I would like to thank you very much for your kind invitation. I'd like to express my gratitude and, um, and um, it is my honor and pleasure to be here and present my work to you. Also, it is my pleasure uh, to teach at the um, accounting theory course. Uh, there have been six uh, very beautiful weeks uh, with the students. Uh, we had a very good communication and um, and, um, it was a very good experience for me. Um, so the topic that I will be presenting today uh, is about corporate philanthropy. Okay, so the topic that I will be present, presenting today is corporate philanthropy in the US stock market. And uh, particularly, I will be um, presenting implications about corporate governance, value relevance, and earnings manipulation. Now, I would like to say a few things about the motivation. I mean, wh what basically triggered uh, the um, examination of this topic? It was some years ago that I read an article uh, on Fortune, uh, magazine Fortune, and uh, it was about some billionaires uh, who were talking about giving. About philanthropy, and um, um, and also there was a video embedded in this article, so I was able to uh, to watch what um, this um, set of uh, this this group of uh, billionaires talking at that round table, and um, to my great surprise, to my very great surprise, I um, witnessed um, a, a discussion as if it was basically delivered by priests. So these billionaires were talking about philanthropy as if they were religious people, talking about giving, about compassion, and about caring about of other people. So I thought that um, uh, what could I do from my side to perhaps um, talk about uh, philanthropy, talk about caring uh, about other people, and uh, in terms of research, so I went back to various journals and I found out that uh, a lot of um, papers have been, have been written about uh, corporate philanthropy. But uh, these papers basically, at least at that time, of course, um, were directed to stock market reaction to corporate philanthropy and or corporate giving as they also call it. So I thought about uh, writing an article about not the impact on stock returns, but uh, 
uh, but about these people that give, or these firms that give, which is of course a divine uh, uh, act indeed, uh, they should be also aligned with other um, ethical values and commitments such as financial reporting quality, that is um, using less, if not zero, of course, earnings manipulation practices, or perhaps um, honoring their shareholders and therefore having um, corporate governance structures very well developed. So this was basically my idea at that time, the connection between, um, between um, corporate giving and corporate philanthropy and other ethical values such as corporate governance, good corporate governance, and of course, financial reporting quality and value relevance, of course. So this was basically the main idea behind um, uh, this article. So uh, to cut this uh, long story short, my main motivation was if these people would speak about this divine value of uh, giving to other people, then what could I do? What could you do? What everybody could, could do? So, so I thought you don't have to be a billionaire to have an impact. You don't have to be a person that is globally known, well known to be able to um, influence other people. Uh, do this from whatever you do, whatever, wherever you are. And perhaps this will have a good impact if you do it with your heart. So let me start with my first slide. Okay. Um, so uh, some introductory remarks first. Um, this uh, first the bullet um, discusses the various forms that corporate philanthropy may take. So first of all, of course, we have cash donations given to charities directly by the company or indirectly through a company sponsored foundation or at last uh, as in-kind gifts of a company's products, services, infrastructure, or know-how. Of course, at this point, I must say, a person, I must talk about briefly, of course, about a personal experience or a question or problem or doubt that I had in my mind. Sometimes people say, and if you give, do you know, are you sure that your money will go to the people that are directed or directed to go to, or that they're supposed to go to? So I searched basically more, and I found out that um, uh, it is written that uh, if you give to people, uh, if you give to the poor, or if, you, if, or if you go to good causes, so to those that are in need, to special groups, then it is as if you basically lend money to God himself. So this is a very, very divine uh, deed as well, as a matter of fact. And one more thing I found, basically. I found that... Um, that if you give with your go with your good heart, uh, without having any other materialistic uh, objectives or or uh, or ultimate goals behind this good deed at the back of your head, so if you give with your good heart just to help people, then it may be that the company or the foundation that is actually handling uh, and managing your money may of course do what you know may may of course uh, uh, resort to. Uh, 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 practices that are unethical, but you've done your good deed uh, any way whatsoever. Of course, this is um, not to say that uh, one should not uh, exercise care to what and how they give, but uh, of course, this is a divine act, uh, and this is how we should all approach it, of course. Now, um, of course, in my, in my paper, there is uh, more information about uh, this uh, statistical information. So, but I thought that it would be a good idea to share some information with you. So according to Giving USA, this is a database in the US, that one of the databases in the US that uh, talks about corporate philanthropy. So according to Giving USA, of course, this is a bit uh, old, but it does, it still gives an indication, of course, an idea. About 73% of charitable giving came from individuals or has come from individuals. 14% from foundations, 8% from big quests, and 5% from corporations. So I'd, I'd like to st st stay here for at least five seconds. Just look at the figures. 70% of 
of charitable giving has come from individuals. The next percentage, that is from foundations, is 14%. No, no comparison, as you can see. No, no comparison. So this, of course, shows people's care and how sensitive they are to issues uh, like this. The majority of charitable dollars um, uh, went, uh, has gone to religion, uh, 32%, uh, education, 13%, and human services, 12%. And therefore, this basically shows the, that uh, people do trust religious institutions in, uh, in the US. And of course, uh, you know, similar percentages would basically, even, even, even not greater, of course, would of course say, uh, get one that uh, is examining other countries. Uh, this table shows um, giving uh, by corporation. Uh, there is uh, a short list of corporations here, uh, US corporations. Uh, the figures are in 2013, based in, on, on 2013. And we can see that Wells Fargo and the company, and Walmart stores are at the top of this list or at least at that year. Of course, you may say what uh, many people say, uh, many people say basically that okay, they give because they want to, you know, to have some tax benefits, or they give to um, uh, to to improve their image, their public image, or they give because uh, I know why, because they have uh, perhaps some litigations, uh, litigation costs, so they have some uh, open uh, cases uh, on court, and they might want to influence, to, to positively influence the jury or the judge. Okay, I know all this and many more, of course, uh, possible motivations have been documented in the uh, worldwide literature. I, I know, I know, of course. But, uh, but nevertheless, what their ultimate goal may be, the fact is that they give. Or the fact even better is that some groups benefit. Some groups of uh, people that are in need and do benefit out of all this. So regardless of what their real motive is, do we care? Or do we perhaps care about uh, um, uh, um, seeing that uh, people that are in need do benefit and, uh, and uh, they uh, benefit in terms of education, in terms of subsidies, in terms of um, uh, good nutrition, in terms of uh, um, drugs and health. So, so this is basically what one should care uh, for mostly, I think. Some more about the introduction. Um, now this uh, slide here uh, attempts to describe the accounting theory or perhaps theories, theories that are behind this topic. And um, before I move on, I would like to say that at the moment, uh, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm at the very, very end of completing a paper on uh, on um, religiosity, on corporate religiosity. And I would be very, very happy to um, come back to you and ask uh, if you would be interested in um, me presenting that paper and getting your valuable feedback, of, of course. I hope that uh, you'll find it quite interesting. Uh, corporate philanthropy is significantly explained by the stakeholder theory in the sense that it is a way for companies to display their social responsibility. To whom? To the local community and to whom else? To various stakeholders in order to satisfy their interests, keep them happy, and so that, uh, that their mission, that their corporate mission is not just to increase their market share, it is not just to become more cost efficient uh, and cost effective. It is not just to reduce the cost of goods sold or at least to influence the cost of goods sold uh, effectively and significantly. It is not to come up with synergies or, uh, or competitive advantages. It's not to satisfy financial analyst forecasts, but their objective as well is to have a good social impact make a good social impact out of what they do, what they are. So the uh, stakeholder theory is one of the theories that we can say that does describe um, this um, topic. 
or underlying corporate giving. Now, this study is uh, mainly uh, based on agency theory. Uh, allow me to take you back to the title of the paper or to the main subject of it, corporate philanthropy and, and um, corporate governance, value relevance and earnings manipulation. So agency theory, we know very well that it describes the relationship between managers and shareholders, managers and lenders, managers and auditors, and of course, other key stakeholders. But these are the three main groups, of course, that are on the, fo on the focus, in the focus of the agency theory. So the agency theory in particular suggests that managers gain through corporate giving. And also, um, the, um, so they have a motive, right? Like, 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 like we say, the managers, I don't know the agency theory, managers might be inclined to use earnings manipulation in order to reinforce their bonuses, for example. So, so likewise, here we say that agency, agency theory prescribes or suggests that managers may gain through corporate giving. And of course, it explains this a bit further. And also, the uh, paper is uh, also based on the value enhancement theory, which argues that corporate philanthropy increases shareholders' wealth. Okay. The main motive to finance philanthropic causes in the effort to enhance a company's social responsibility profile may be regarded as an agency cost since the act of good by managers may create opportunity losses for shareholders. This paragraph, it's not my words, of course, but uh, Brown at all, is very important in my opinion, because one can uh, perceive this or approach you know, corporate giving um, from a good standpoint saying, okay, uh, corporate giving is, is all but good. There should be nothing uh, uh, dark um, involved in, in corporate giving. But if we want to examine the real motives uh, of corporate giving, managerial motives, then it may be that uh, the, the motives may be dark. For example, to influence, uh, you know, to, uh, to influence um, investor perceptions positively or to mislead the investors by showing a good image, good profile to the public. Or it may be that uh, managers decided to give to specific philanthropic causes that indirectly perhaps they are related to, which is quite unethical of course, but it may happen of course. So this specific, this specific paragraph, this specific bullet is very important because after all, uh, corporate giving may also be regarded as an, agency, uh, as an agency cost. So corporate giving also calls for monitoring. It, it also calls for monitoring. No mistake about it. Monitoring to safeguard shareholders' objectives, of course. Especially if corporate spending is related to, as I said previously, self-defined giving programs and causes. Managerial self-defined managers have defined philanthropic causes. Previous research on corporate philanthropy has concentrated on the association between corporate giving and taxes, company earnings, government incentives, and market conditions. Okay. So, and of course, all this is described in the paper. I mean, the references, what, what has been documented, and what has been found also in the literature. Now, uh, this, uh, at that time at least, <laughs> I believe, uh, it was the first study to link corporate giving to earnings manipulation, corporate governance, and value relevance. Now, let us, uh, if you agree, let us talk about, or let us go through the attributes of corporate giving, at least some of the main attributes. High leverage and strict debt covenants are likely to reduce corporate giving. Now, you may say, you may wonder why. Well, look at the bullet below. Higher debt would signify that lenders exercise greater, closer 
uh, monitoring. And therefore, corporate giving would be more credible, uh, more careful, more serious, more responsible in that respect. High growth would show that companies possess certain competitive advantages. So they, and so they are in a growth area, growth phase, which may lead to positive market values and stock returns and subsequently encourage them to give to charity. Especially, no, not only because they, not only because they may be uh, experiencing and displaying good results, good financial results, but also because exactly because they are in a growth phase, so they are growing. So, um, in, in this, in their effort to further support and uh, reinforce their growth and their expansion, they might want to give to attract people's interest and attention as well. Or they, uh, uh, or use successive casts for for their growth potential. Yes, that's right. To further support it. Furthermore, companies with more and diverse sources of revenue would possess a more stable income stream. Tend to at least, which would reinforce their corporate giving in the long run, make it more stable. Large and highly visible companies may be inclined to give back to the community in the form of public donations in order to obtain a favorable treatment from market participants and authorities. So here, uh, what I'd like you to um, focus on is the size, company size. So companies that are visible in the market uh, and, and know that uh, that they are being watched by analysts and uh, by other inv by investors, we tend to um, uh, care more uh, for their public image by also um, taking initiatives regarding giving and philanthropy. Similar considerations would hold for companies that operate in environmentally sensitive industries, such as chemicals, plastics, oil and gas, as well as for companies that are in highly regulated industries such as banks and financial services. Is this not true? It is true, right? This is, of course, clear that this happens. I can recall, of course, in my country, a big uh, cement industry, uh, um, a factory of, of this company is located in my city, um, towards the outskirts, close to the outskirts of the city, basically. And the local community wants and uh, persistently asks for this uh, company to move their factory elsewhere. And um, it is, of course, admirable, in quotes, of course, this is an, an irony, that uh, this um, big industry gives or wants to give uh, donations, scholarships, um, very, very frequently. And I say it wants to give because on many occasions uh, they're not uh, accepted just because people, the local community understands that these donations, that these uh, givings come from their effort to get accepted by the local community. Um, at the same time, of course, the other uh, negative impact on the environment is um, so sound that uh, it makes people uh, despise uh, also their donations. Furthermore, corporate giving could tend to be positively related to board size. Boards with more independent and downside directors we tend to apply more intensive oversight. And therefore, uh, greater screening with respect to, um, uh, with, with respect to um, uh, corporate, give, uh, corporate uh, giving uh, causes and other philanthropic um, initiatives. Companies that display higher levels of internal, internationalization, we tend to exhibit greater corporate giving as well. Um, for example, companies that are listed on American stock exchanges, uh, I say I refer to American stock exchanges because this study is based on the US, on US data. So I had, I had the opportunity to read many papers that relate to US data specifically. So I can say, with certainty that um, uh, the American community, the American people 
of course, uh, this is the case in many other countries and societies. So the American society is very sensitive to, um, to giving, to sharing. Therefore, companies that uh, get listed on American stock exchanges are by far more motivated to give. So it's like a, it's like a, a tradition. Uh, and uh, like a common practice that no one can, of course, bypass or violate or ignore. Companies with more years of operation are more likely to support charitable causes as well. Now, um, going back to the uh, theory that is um, under uh, behind this uh, study, I'd like, uh, with your permission, to focus on the agency theory specifically. And here are some considerations. Corporate giving is discretionary. Mm -hmm. Now this is a magic word here. I say a magic word because earnings manipulation, as we all know, uh, is prescribed by or captured by, uh, or, or it is quantified by, quantified by uh, discretionary accruals, right? Yeah, we have discretionary and non-discretionary accruals. So the discretionary accruals are basically one proxy for earnings manipulation. So uh, you can see the link and the connection here. So corporate giving is discretionary and would also fluctuate with the level of discretionary, or oh, here it is, accruals. Mm -hmm. Free cash flows may be used to interpret the behavior of discretionary accruals. Managers may act opportunistically by using shareholder money or giving to targeted beneficiaries at their discretion. Thus, corporate giving may be regarded as a form of social exchange or discretionary reserve for managers. And I think that um, this is a very important statement because um, it is, isn't it? So, so you may have a certain um, uh, uh, money reserves, which you can direct uh, at your discretion uh, and as you see fit, based, of course, on uh, the financial results of the year, based, of course, on your, on your reputation, based, of course, on your growth options, uh, based, of course, on, your, uh, on how the market perceives and appreciates what you do and what you are. I, I repeat, I repeat what uh, the literature has documented. Firms with high litigation costs are very likely to resort to um, excessive corporate giving in order to influence, uh, in, or in their effort to influence um, uh, the judge and the jury. Um, yes, what do you think is the question if corporate giving is a way for a company to hide the company's obligations, for example, a mining company to close its ex mining pits. Um, as I said previously, yes, as I said previously, and as the literature basically has documented, um, corporate giving, uh, especially when it is targeted to specific sub defined managerial objectives and causes, may be used to mislead investors. And I think that this says everything. So that is why I said a few moments ago, only a few seconds ago, that corporate giving is related to uh, the financial results of the year, the um, reputation of the company, the public image. And of course, when the company is encountered with specific problems or issues or doubts or challenges that may or may not affect the society, the local society and the local community uh, adversely and unfavorably, like the example that you mentioned, then of course, um, they may resort to, at the same time, to donations and corporate spending in order to influence these um, people or to mitigate any negative impact of their actions. I'm telling you, I know this for sure, firsthand, because this is what we are actually having in my city with this cement company that I mentioned earlier. I'm sorry, Fouad, what do you mean? Did you observe that troubled?
Yes, that's right, uh, Fouad. That's right. And uh, but but the, the, the thing is, the thing is, what happens afterwards? So we do know that troubled firms, in any respect, okay, um, uh, do tend to give more. The, the the question is, what happens after this? How the market appreciates this, or how the market responds to this? Do they uh, further uh, penalize these firms, or are they basically misled and carried away for, by their good in quotes by their good deeds? This is the question. And another question is, how well educated is the stock market to understand what is behind all this? Another question is, how sensitive are the regulators in order to um, come up and impose certain regulations for the good of the society and of the local communities here and there? This, uh, these are the questions, I believe, which are quite hard to answer for various reasons. One of the reasons, as we also mentioned in the previous economic theory classes in the previous weeks, is lobbying activities, which may, of course, delay the, um, uh, the, development, the development of certain regulations or, uh, or the exercise of certain measures by the government, or may postpone them or cancel them for good. <clears throat> um, um, my pleasure. <clears throat> Managers could select to donate in-kind gifts. So an, an alternative, if, 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 if someone thinks that uh, giving money may be uh, quite, uh, um, may give rise to suspicions, then another argument may be, all right, no problem, just give in-kind. Um, so firm managers could select to donate in-kind in gifts, which are of lesser operational value, or which entail relatively less significant outflows. For example, <clears throat> tangible fixed assets that are close to the end of their useful economic life, or obsolete inventory. By obsolete inventory, we mean inventory that is out of date, out of a market. Or in other words, we mean practically and technically speaking, accounting wise, we mean uh, inventory whose uh, cost as prescribed by FIFO, for example, or the weighted average cost method is lower, is um, higher than the net realizable value. But of course, when we say to give assets that are close to the end of their useful economic life, or that are you know obsolete, we don't mean that uh, we should that these are that it is okay to give useless assets, useless stuff. This is of course ridiculous, isn't it? Of course not. This is even worse. Uh, lack of respect to those that are in need. So we talk about assets that have their own value. They may they there may be close to the end of their useful economic life, but if they have been used well, um, or the uh, 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 or they still possess certain um, usefulness, then of course they may be given. Um, okay, uh, uh, for, for example, uh, universities in Greece, it's a common practice that universities donate computers to uh, primary and high schools. Not of course uh, computers that are um, slow or that are problematic, but um, if the university had got a fund from the government to replace their um, equipment and machinery, then of course the old ones may just be donated to sele carefully selected ones, of course, to schools. Uh, or we may have country uh, wide donations. For example, one country gives, for example, um, many countries in Europe, if not all, have given uh, in-kind uh, uh, donations, uh, drugs and medicine and, and food to uh, the Ukrainian people. So this is country level donations. Or um, uh, the United States have many times donated um, uh, uh, various arms to Greece, uh, donated, right? Not sold, but donated, because they have been, you know, planes or other um, uh, means uh, that uh, they are not using now because they have um, renewed their own um, uh, infrastructure 
uh, or um, uh, planes. And so they decide to give them to uh, another country to tighten and uh, reinforce their relations and their support for various reasons, of course. Um, the second yellow bullet uh, says that low cost goods and services to socially sensitive groups of people may be given for free. Now, let us um, go straight to the data sets uh, that have been used. So um, the sample is uh, 687 US firms listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Of course, the initial sample was, uh, as you can see right below, far bigger, but um, you know, the internal problem of researchers, if, you, you, if you're using uh, different databases, and you want to have the same data for uh, your uh, uh, for your uh, sample companies across the various databases. You have uh, you cannot avoid uh, losing data. Um, um, trying to uh, connect them for your sample. So um, the data sources included charitable giving data, corporate giving directory, giving USA, and the national director of corporate giving in the US. Financial data was taken from data stream, corporate governance data from Bordex and the SEC Securities and Exchange Commission filings, and financial analyst data from Thompson One Banker. So trying to connect all this <laughs> data sets, uh, unfortunately reduced my sample down to 687 firms. This is uh, an internal problem. We all, we all um, have this problem, right? Always research. Hi, Arif. I mean, you see, I'm reading your comment. So the question is how corporate governance mechanisms <clears throat> must be or could be improved to make this concept look uh, good. And we know that activity will have effect, of course, for the company directly. Uh, Arif, if you don't mind, let me answer this question through my uh, presentation because I do talk about and I do examine um, giving, corporate giving and uh, corporate, corporate governance. So, so I, I will be answering this through my presentation, if you don't mind. If your question is still unanswered, please uh, to come back at the end of the presentation. Uh, the period of the analysis is 2008 to 2012. Okay. And here we are with the hypothesis and the respective models. The way I've uh, structured my presentation is this. I saw the hypothesis, I saw the model, and then I saw um, the, well, not every table because there are quite, you know, quite a few. I saw my main results, um, showing the regression tables and some notes that I will be explaining. Okay, so let's start with the first hypothesis. I should say that the first hypothesis is quite exploratory. Uh, corporate giving is likely to display, this is the hypothesis, um, a positive association within kind contributions, size, liquidity, research and development, expenditure, and the possibility of litigation, and the negative association with leverage, agency costs, growth and corporate governance. So um, you can understand that this is, as I just mentioned, an exploratory um, hypothesis. And uh, the uh, main objective is uh, to uh, basically clear the scenery, just to understand the main characteristics uh, of um, US firms that they give. Then of course, the following hypothesis uh, go further, uh, well, directly to the heart of the problem. 
So the corporate giving is basically the dependent variable. And here we have a number of independent variables. And just for time brevity, I'd like to just show you not every single variable because this would be perhaps a very boring or if not tiring for you. And of course, everything is in the paper. And I will basically share my paper if I haven't done already, in which case I do apologize with Fuad so that then Fuad can um, email it to everybody or upload it on the platform so that everybody can have access to it and to the information and to the details of all this. So as I was saying, I'd rather show you the main results just to keep your attention and your interest um, uh, concentrated because there are more hypotheses that will follow. So, so my main objective is not just to um, overload you with uh, you know, variables and technical definitions, but just to show you the main results and then we can discuss them further if you want. Uh, and then of course, feel free to email me and let me just write my email address here in case it's not uh, known. And so that uh, you can send me emails for the paper uh, itself or for your paper clarifications or other research um, problems that you might or would like to share with me and to discuss them with me. So look please at the chat box. Yes, this is my email address. Feel free to use it. Okay, then, so let's see what we got. Okay. <clears throat> So, um, as I said, the uh, uh, dependent variable is uh, corporate giving. Let me see the other next question. By Erna. Sometimes corporate uh, charities are based on the uh, direction of the founder, yes. not from the manager's decision. Well, when you say founder, what do you mean exactly? You mean the block holders? Uh, founder, the founder is, of course, not the block holder, but uh, uh, what do you mean exactly? It depends, of course, on the structure of the firm, right? And the legal status. If it is, for example, a sole owned firm, of course, the founder, the, you know, the an, an, an owner, of course, uh, is uh, the one that will make the decision. And if there are no shareholders, of course, it's theory definitely uh, makes no sense. But uh, here we talk about firms which are listed, uh, which have uh, shareholders from all around the globe, perhaps. Uh, they have their management uh, uh, team, the board of directors, uh, who is, of course, accountable and, uh, and have to report back to shareholders. And therefore, we, we, we wonder, uh, are they doing what they're doing in the best interest of shareholders or um, maybe not quite? Okay, but let me carry on. So, um, as I was saying, um, the uh, corporate giving is um, positively related to fill and ink. Let, let me just uh, share the PDF document. Just to, uh, I wouldn't like to define all, all, all variables, but I think that these uh, two are indeed useful to do so. Okay. Oops. Oops, sorry, 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 this is too big. Okay, dokie. So if you look at this at the top of the screen, feel is, um, let me highlight it also. Okay. Feel is, um, uh, it's a dummy variable. It takes one for firms that adopt uh, structured philanthropic uh, initiatives and uh, feel is equal to zero if, uh, if, uh, if uh, other, otherwise. Uh, we're talking about structured philanthropic initiatives. Inc is in-kind contributions. And it's a firm's in-kind contributions as a proportion to total corporate giving. And uh, FRE, uh, the natural logarithm of FRE is basically fundraising expenses. So, so these are basically proxies of um, corporate giving. That is why I wanted to uh, define them and show them to you to avoid any problems with uh, the regression table.
Yeah, I'd like to carry on with the, uh, thank you very much for your comments. I'd like to carry on with the, with the, with the presentation because otherwise it will never end. So, uh, and um, I, I will check your comments uh, as we uh, move forward. And if we have no time for all comments, then please feel free to uh, contact me and I will be very happy, of course, to respond. So we observe here that uh, corporate giving is, of course, mostly related to structured philanthropic events uh, and uh, initiatives, to in-kind, also to in-kind uh, uh, giving as well. And of course, the more we give, um, the greater, of course, the fundraising, the fundraising expenses are. Now, as um, the hypothesis predicted, um, corporate giving is negatively related to gearing, to leverage, uh, due to ex extensive monitoring, as we, as I said previously. Uh, also, uh, Tobin skew, TQ, Tobin skew for agency costs, we observe a positive association, which means that uh, greater corporate giving is uh, positively related to agency, uh, to agency costs, uh, potentially. Um, corporate giving is um, negatively um, related to market to book value, uh, perhaps because you give, so you're, because of this cash outflows, uh, we may have a negative impact on market to book value. And also advertising, uh, R&D, um, are also positively related to corporate giving, for obvious reasons, of course. If your R&D is big, and you are in a growth area, um, if you advertise your uh, company, so you want to get heard and seen by people, then of course corporate giving may be uh, and also uh, also a very good idea uh, to do so to support your public image reinforcement. Now, um, some corporate governance variables follow: independent and independent directors, the proportion of independent directors on the board, IND. Um, so. IDB uh, is um, everything may be found here. IDB is the percentage at the bottom of the screen of independent directors. Um, uh, IND is, uh, let me see. Okay. Um, Uh, dummy variable proxies for industry. Oh, yes. So, sorry. I'm sorry. The IND, yes, it is also defined at the bottom right corner. So, look please at the corporate governance variables IDB for independent directors, NEXEC for non executive directors, MC, uh, which is basically managerial um, uh, uh, change. It's a dummy variable, it stands for a management change that has or may have occurred uh, during the year. Uh, we know that uh, when a management changes in the first year in office, the new management may resort to earnings manipulation. So this is basically a very good proxy for corporate giving. REM for remuneration uh, is basically performance related bonuses. Uh, big uh, O is basically whether the firm is audited by big for auditor or not. Uh, then we move on to NA is net assets scaled by total revenues. SO is proportion, the proportion of ordinary shares held by shareholders who own 5% or more of the company. Uh, this variable attempts to identify the um, potential of uh, having specific blockholders who uh, direct the company to where they would like to. CLS is a percentage of shares closely held by strategic investors. And finally, lit is the probability of litigation costs. So going back to corporate governance, we observe that corporate uh, giving is negatively related to uh, corporate governance measures such as independent directors and non-executive directors. Um, when we have a management change in place, we see that we may have a uh, uh, extensive corporate giving. Uh, of course, corporate giving is positively related to um, bonus uh, based remuneration for managers. So they give more to impress people and, uh, and, um, and also reinforce their own public image and remuneration. Of course, if the company is 
monitored by, is audited by big auditors, then the corporate causes would be more carefully selected. So we observe a negative association here. Um, net assets, net assets, net assets uh, capture the company size. So a bigger firm would tend to give more. Uh, SO and CLS, here we have the percentage of um, stocks owned by block holders or by strategic shareholders. So we observe here a greater um, monitoring and therefore less uh, corporate giving. And finally, of course, a firm that has greater litigation uh, cost probability, we tend to give more. So we observe this positive uh, coefficient. Um, so we basically conclude that this hypothesis does hold. And uh, going back to it, corporate giving is indeed positive related to in-kind contributions, size, liquidity, R&D, and probability of litigation and negatively, of course, to leverage agency costs, growth and corporate governance. The second hypothesis is about value relevance. Corporate giving is value relevant and is likely to positively influence investor perceptions and future profitability and growth. Um, these are the two models that I use here. Um, the dependent variable is the stock price in the first model on this slide and the uh, uh, market value to book value of equity in the second model. We also have the third one, corporate giving being the dependent variable. But let us check the results. Okay. Um, just uh, remember, please, that the uh, dependent variable in the first model was the stock price, the market to book value in the second model, and the uh, corporate giving in the third model. Could you please look at the two uh, panel A, at the two last um, uh, variables? They are interaction terms. So we observe that firms that give, CG, corporate giving, with corporate giving, or with fill with the structured philanthropic um, initiatives, uh, they do uh, show a positive association between their cash flows and uh, stock uh, prices, meaning that the market appreciates and approves their initiative to give. In the second um, uh, panel, panel B, where the market to book value of equity is a dependent variable, we observe the same thing. If you could please look at the two last variables the same ones that I mentioned earlier, we observe that um, we have a positive association between uh, cash flows and market uh, to book value of equity for firms that give. The same happens, of course, if we if you took the earnings over the book value, which is a few variables right above, for our corporate givers, meaning that they also uh, 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 influence the stock market uh, valuation positively. Of course, one would and should examine this a bit further because it is one thing to say that overall we expect we um, we get a positive association, but further examination should um, and would be, of course, um, um, shed more light on all this. Now, what happens with respect to the last model where we had the um, corporate giving? Let's go back to the model, please. Okay, uh, I, I would like here to um, highlight a couple of variables. FE is the forecast error, FD is the forecast dispersion, and uh, log AF is the natural logarithm of uh, analyst uh, following, the number of analysts following the company. So among all the other variables, I'd like to actually stay on these specific ones. Perhaps also check the interaction terms. Uh, let's go back to the table. This is a uh, panel C, um, table four. So that's right here. Uh, okay. And you can also see the variables right after, right below every every table. 
Okay, so POS stands for, let me highlight this here, POS stands for positive return values. It's a dummy variable. ST stands for trading volume. So they are basically some stock market uh, variables. CTV is the price change in trading volume. So basically I wanted to attempt to um, come up with a connection between given and some key stock market uh, performance um, measures. Uh, JF is the uh, Janice Fadner coefficient um, regarding um, um, uh, investor satisfaction. So let's see, enter is foreign sales, which is foreign exposure. So going back to our results, what do we observe? To my great pleasure, uh, what the paper found was that uh, there is a positive association between corporate giving and analyst following, log AF. So the more we give, the more we attract people's attention, investors' attention, here, analysts' attention. Now, of course, I understand for good reasons for, and for negative reasons. It may be that we attract their attention because we do something very good at a very, at a very large scale, or it may be that we attract their attention because they might they, they are a bit um, um, uncertain about the real reasons or motives of our uh, giving. But nevertheless, we do achieve our, our objective, which is to attract people's attention whatsoever. With respect to forecast error and forecast dispersion, um, what I observed here was negative associations. In the first place, I was very happy, and I'm very happy, um, no doubt about that. But in my effort to, uh, to explain this further, I came up with this um, explanation. Um, when a firm gives, of course, um, further, further analysis should be conducted. Um, when a firm gives, especially when a firm gives at large scale, um, then um, it is very likely, as I said and at, the, at the very start of today's session, it's very likely that this firm may give uh, and um, for various reasons, but um, it may also be the case that this firm is also uh, has faith in, um, uh, in other ethical values and commitments, and that uh, it's, it's likely that this firm is also um, reporting figures, accounting numbers, um, in compliance with accounting regulation, and also with respect to shareholders, long-term shareholders' objectives. Uh, so her shareholders' long-term objectives. So having said all that, uh, this firm would tend to give more information readily and timely, uh, make it readily available and on, time, and on a timely basis, so that the information that analysts would require, the proprietary information that analysts would require to establish their own analyst report and, to, and view an assessment of the company uh, would be of lower, of less cost. So that their forecasts would basically show less deviation from the mean, from the actual, in other words. And that is why the forecast error, forecast dispersion is appear to be um, uh, with a negative sign which is of course very good, yes? And if you combine all this with the uh, subsequent hypothesis, which talk about earnings manipulation and financial reporting quality, then this makes sense. This does make sense. But I repeat, further analysis should be conducted. For example, in my religiosity paper that I'm working on now, um, I've, I've, I've actually conducted further analysis to make this a stronger case. Um, we can also observe that uh, trading volume, for example, uh, ST shows um, a positive association. Um, BA is the BDASK spread, you know, the uh, information asymmetry and information asymmetry uh, proxy, which shows a negative association with corporate giving, which is very good, of course. This means, and all this means, of course, guys, that um, corporate giving, you know, establishes a firm very well in people's mind and heart, as long as the firm also, of course, gives timely information which is credible and reliable. Look this at the bottom left corner, the interaction term between 
uh, are uh, stock returns and the dummy variable which take pause which takes which takes one if um, we have positive returns also it is positively associated with corporate giving so this is also a um a uh, another evidence of piece of evidence of uh, stock market appreciation um so so these are of course a multitude of good results which um in fact uh, encouraged me to carry on another hypothesis firms that engage in charitable giving are likely to exhibit lower discretionary accruals that is lower earnings manipulation so the dependent variable here is abnormal abnormal accruals uh, of course you can come up with discretionary accruals uh, in many ways there are many many different uh, formulas for sensitivity analysis i mean we have the typical corporate um, we have the typical corporate giving variables i also have here certain corporate governance variables um, on their own and in interaction format let's see what happens you'll see that uh, earnings manipulation as expressed by uh, abnormal accruals are negatively is, is negatively associated with corporate giving you see corporate giving structured philanthropic initiatives in-kind contributions are all negatively related to earnings manipulation meaning that firms that uh, tend to manipulate um tend to give more or 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 the way around if you want firms that give more tend to show uh, um, reported numbers of greater quality bell high is below high is basically other additional earnings manipulation um, proxies uh, which use certain thresholds um, you can also see the uh, corporate governance uh, interaction terms on the right column corporate governance um sorry uh, hold on a second and uh, we have an exec yeah next sec for non-executives idb for independent directors on the board of directors the proportion uh, big auditors being audited by a big audited firm by a big auditor firm you just can see that all these variables carry negative coefficients cls for closely um uh, for firms uh, that are um uh, that, 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 that are display that display uh, investors that are uh, closely hold uh, uh, big chunks of stocks also greater monitoring this means therefore an earnings manipulation tends to be lower this is of course a, a very good a very good uh, uh, finding uh, you may also find out uh, other uh, results for example if you look at the middle of the right column, you'll see this interaction term called CG, corporate giving, times MBV, times market value to book value of equity. And this carries a positive coefficient. So this means what exactly? What, what exactly really? So this basically shows that firms that are in a growth phase, in a growth area that grow, uh, would tend to show a positive association between corporate giving and risk manipulation meaning that they may be giving but um, to self-defined causes to support their growth and expansion um, in contrast if you if you look at uh, um, the variable that is corporate giving times uh, the size lna natural logarithm of total assets you see that the visible markets big for uh, visible visible firms big firms we tend to show would, uh, that give tend to basically show lower earnings manipulation exactly because they are visible in the market. Therefore, they wouldn't like to risk getting caught. A new CEO or CFO is more likely to spend on charity in order to influence market participants' perceptions. Uh -huh. The adoption of in-kind contributions is likely to reduce agency costs because in this case, shareholders would not uh, so much fear about where this money goes to uh, or why this money goes to goes there uh, especially that now that we need it for expansions for for uh, remote uh, for modernizing for modernizing our production process or for other good causes so giving 
uh, in-kind contributions might, of course, reduce their uncertainty and their um, uh, doubts. Large firms tend to give more and high growth firms tend to give less. High leverage and strong corporate governance uh, mechanisms tend to monitor the use of Slack resources more intensively and to lead to lower charitable spending. The same when a company is being audited by a big auditor, a high proportion of ordinary shares are held by shareholders, our strategic investors, and a company faces, and when a company faces high litigation costs. Corporate giving is positively related to analyst forecast accuracy, so these are main findings, and leads to significant analyst coverage and upward revisions and lower bid-ask spreads as a proxy of information asymmetry. It reduces the corporate giving, reduces the scope for earnings manipulation, for example, charity givers with low liquidity and high leverage display lower abnormal accruals. The point, the point in this, uh, of this result is that even if they have lower liquidity, exactly because they, are, they have faith in uh, high ethical and divine and moral uh, values, they would still don't, they would still avoid using earnings manipulation practices. You see the link here? Even if they have lower liquidity, they would still avoid using earnings manipulation. Why? Because they are characterized by uh, their commitment to moral convictions such as corporate giving, which is just one of them. However, higher growth prospects may urge or may motivate firms or tempt firms to direct slack resources to discretionary charitable causes. Effective corporate governance would restrain unwelcome manipulative managerial behaviors and would therefore reduce agency costs and strengthen firm value. Um, by firm value, of course, due to the limited time of the presentation. Um, you know that the paper also talks about uh, value relevance. Um, it was not presented previously, but in the paper, of course, I, you see both the hypothesis and the results, of course, in their discussion. So, so if I have not done already, I will send this to Fuad so that he can uh, share it with, with all of you. Accounting regulations should reinforce, therefore, the quality of disclosure requirements that relate to fundraising and corporate giving. Yes, yes. So everybody will then be happy and feel more relaxed with respect to the causes that are selected by managers to give money to. So that opportunistic behaviors are, of course, uh, eliminated. especially for firms with, uh, growth, uh, with high growth potential. In-kind contributions, as opposed to cash contributions, may be used as a, corporate, as, a co as a governance or monitoring tool to reduce the scope for earnings manipulation. So in other words, it is as if you ask them, uh, dear sir, madam, would you still be inclined to give if it is to give only in-kind contributions or not? Um, furthermore, some future research objectives. Future research should investigate the potential for earnings manipulation that may be applied under different tax settings in order to maintain firms' ability to spend on charity and meet personal managerial objectives. It should also comparatively examine corporate giving in countries with different institutional characteristics, such as common law and code law countries, or in emerging markets, or in countries where the quality of financial reporting is perceived to be somewhat lower. So thank you very much for your attention. This was just part of this paper. And I would like to 
uh, welcome you to uh, or invite you to read the paper, uh, which will be sent to you all, and uh, come back to me with uh, questions if you want, further questions if you want, or uh, ideas for your own research. So uh, once again, I'd like to thank you for your invitation and for your attention as well. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Prof. Yadritis, for the very interesting uh, topics and presentations. Actually, this is very comprehensive, where the corporate philanthropy or corporate uh, charities is related with the corporate governance. Is that is one thing, and another thing is uh, how the corporate philanthropy also give um, uh, more value to the stock market. And this is also uh, one thing to can develop more. And the other aspect is. Uh, about uh, how corporate philanthropy also uh, will be lower the earning manipulation <coughs> conducted by the company. This is a very interesting uh, finding. So uh, next, I will open up the opportunity for the audience uh, to raise hand uh, to uh, ask the question directly to the prof or the other, the other piece. Or uh, you also welcome uh, to write um, your question in the meeting chat. Yeah, and we have already have uh, some question here in our meeting chat, uh, and two of them already uh, answered directly by Prof. Atridis. Uh, if I may uh, to read uh, the question from the meeting chat, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, the first question uh, I put in order uh, from the Mr. Johannes Julianto. Uh, what do you think, uh, Prof, if a corporate giving is a way for the company to hide the company obligation, for example, a mining company uh, to close its ex mining pits? Uh, I think uh, Prof uh, already answered that uh, during the presentation. Uh, and then uh, the second questions, yeah, from Mr. Arif Rahman. Uh, hello, Prof. Nice to see you. First of all, we know that uh, corporate philanthropy is one type of GSR who carried out by the company contribution and it made directly by dispersing funds. Some examples of this type of GSR are charity program, donation, and the provision of assistance in any form. So how corporate government mechanism must be improved to make this concept look good. And we know that activity will have effect on the company directly. So any more elaboration from you, uh, Prof. Yadidis, to respond to this question, uh, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very yes. much for this. Yes, it's a very good question, a very practical question. Um, uh, in my opinion, uh, what uh, should happen here, uh, of course, uh, in very, you know, various firms do have this on board, of course, but not all. So uh, we must um, uh, stress the importance of having uh, not only non-executive directors on board, uh, and not only independent directors on board, uh, with, who sometimes are elected or selected or appointed indirectly. We know we know how many. The pool of the candidates is uh, pre-selected, and therefore uh, you may have an executive directors or independent directors who basically serve the, um, um, you know, uh, the board's interests without uh, not serving the shareholders' interests. So one thing is basically to make sure how these people are basically um, identified and appointed first. Second. Um, uh, the uh, internal audit committee must be reinforced. Um, in my opinion, this is very important so that the internal audit committee doesn't only play the role of checking the compliance of the various economic numbers with regulation, but also make sure that um, whatever happens, what is basically minuted, or, or in other words, approved and decided in the, uh, in the, during the uh, board meetings, uh, are also uh, authorized by shareholders in quotes, in general, uh, by their objectives and their goals, of course. So this is very important. Uh, also, there should be transparency. 
um, there should be a set of uh, criteria that should always be um, examined and uh, respected before selecting uh, the right philanthropic cause to give. And of course, this should be made uh, publicly available so that there is no doubt by anyone uh, with respect to the real motive behind, uh, behind giving. Now, of course, other corporate governance mechanisms such as um, monitoring, um, for example, we know that, um, uh, that uh, shareholders who fear that, uh, uh, who fear that, uh, uh, that managers may not respect their objectives, their goals, um, would like to prefer debt than equity so that the banks, the lenders, play this monitoring role. And they will play it very well, as a matter of fact. So there may be other indirect ways of corporate governance, I mean, that can uh, be serving the same purpose, which is, of course, transparency and, uh, and credibility. Um, other um, corporate governance mechanisms is basically duali duality. That is, the chairman, something that was not mentioned earlier, the chairman or president of the company, to be a different person uh, to the C of the C uh, than the CEO. So two different people. So one will exercise uh, monitoring uh, over the other person, or at least they will know that um, someone may be there watching me, watching, watching me, what I'm doing. Another corporate governance measure or mechanism is basically the tenure, the CEO tenure. We know that the CEOs that are there for many, many years, we, we, we know what happens, right? We, no, no, no comment. We know what happens. So there must be some uh, limit with respect to how many years these people must uh, can, be, can or could stay on board uh, on the steering wheel of the company. So uh, these are some ways, of course, uh, many more can be uh, thought of uh, to um, uh, make sure that, uh, uh, that objectively uh, the right decisions are made. Then if I go to the next question, uh, if I scroll down, er Erna, uh, sometimes corporate charities are based on the direction of the founder. Oh, yeah, this is what I discussed earlier. Okay, so yes, if it is about a sole owner, a sole owned firm, absolutely, Erna, right? In this case, you 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 would personally decide to whom you want to give and uh, or to what cause you would like to give, and that would be all. Of course, the essence theory that you know would have no impact here, absolutely. But it, it does have some of the impact, of course, on firms with uh, shareholders and um, and uh, stakeholders who have a uh, certain interest in the company. Yes, um, yes uh, Prof. Uh, maybe uh, the question of from Erna Sofiani also related uh, with the question from the Erma Erma Hartianti here, uh, because uh, founder is also part of the family. Uh, so if uh -huh. I need to uh, uh -huh. okay. read your okay. question. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. companies in Indonesia is dominated by family firms. Is there any distinctive characteristic of family firm versus non-family firm with regard to corporate philanthropy firm? Yes, uh, thank you very much for, the, for this question. Um, the literature says that uh, firms that are controlled by uh, family, by families, um, uh, well, might not be um, characterized by the same uh, objectives uh, compared to firms that are not. What I'm trying to say is this. If you have a small base of shareholders, of course, outside your family, all right? Outside, of course, outside the family, of course, then you might as well not care about them. Because, uh, because if the family is um, exercising the control, uh, then of course um, the actions and the decisions that will be made will be directed to the family's main objectives, of course. So I'm trying to say without, of course, uh, ignoring or neglecting the other shareholders' interests uh, or without, of course, saying or implying by no means that the family doesn't care at all about other shareholders. I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not implying this uh, by no means. I'm just trying to say this. As we say that, common law countries um, have shareholders and investors on their focus primarily. As we say that code law countries have lenders and banks on their main focus primarily, without saying that all other parties are, you know, 
uh, are, are uh, uh, scrapped or neglected, you know. Uh, likewise, when we have family owned firms or family controlled firms, the, the focus would be the family, of course, interests. And therefore, uh, issues regarding corporate governance uh, might not be so sound. I'm not saying not at all, but they may not be so sound as they would be uh, otherwise. Uh, so family controlled firms do have an issue with respect to corporate governance. Because if you don't have, yeah, just to cut a long story short, if, uh, if a company does not have a big and diverse base of shareholders, then monitoring will be a harder task. Easier to buy bypass, to bypass, easier, easier to bend. So there is an inherent problem with family owned firms. So regulation basically should come in place and, uh, and uh, impose certain rules and requirements to uh, resolve this problem. Also, stock market should be more and better educated to understand this and therefore not penalize firms. I wouldn't say that. I'm only, I would only say to require more information so that these firms do know, do know what they should be expected to deliver. And that if they don't deliver, the market is so efficient that they would penalize them. So, yeah, this is my response. Okay, Prof. Uh, maybe uh, before we continue to the next question, we already have uh, one participant here and that raised the hand. Uh, maybe we can give the opportunity uh, to Mr. Surya Raharja PST to directly raise the question to you, Prof. Uh, if you don't mind. Okay, Pak Surya, uh, please. Yeah. Thank you, Maji. Uh, good morning, George. Uh, yeah, uh, this is in my mind. Uh, uh, I have a question because uh, uh, in corporate philanthropy, I think it is more specific rather than uh, corporate responsibility. And uh, uh, yeah, this is in my perception. Uh, corporate philanthropy is supposed to be uh, pure uh, rather than uh, instrumental uh, benefit from the good deeds, um, and uh, what, what what is the true motive? Is it if it is individual, we can we can imagine this is a, a good person giving a, a charity. But what about a, a, a corporate? And I'm interested also with your next uh, paper about uh, corporate religiosity. Is it is it there are something related with? With that, what is the true motive uh, a corporate doing uh, philanthropy? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your question. I, I really, uh, I'm very happy to um, share my views with you. And uh, it's a very, very good topic that you touch. One of my most favorite topics, in fact. Research and non-research wise, of course. So as you, as you said, and you said it very, very correctly, um, what is, or maybe the true motive behind uh, uh, corporate philanthropy, right? So one may say that um, you know, tax benefits and tax seals. Another one may say to, oh, uh, let us make no mistake, just to improve their public image, impress people. And uh, this is of course, as psychologists say, an indirect way of course, to um, get into people's heart. Because if you're doing something very, very noble, very, very good. Of course, you 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 know you can you can have these people by your side, and they and they these people will, will not even know it. <laughs> they will not even know it. Yeah. Because they will you know appreciate what you do, and they will sympathize uh, the cause. And uh, next day they they may be your your customers, your clients, for example. Well, it's very likely, of course. So the, all these arguments are are valid. No no yeah. doubt about that. It's logical, of course. It it is it is logical. It is reasonable. Yeah. But um, uh, going through my religiosity paper, literature reading, readings, I, I found out this, that um, firms that are religious, meaning that firms that uh, either the CEO is a very religi religious person, and has faith, uh, and therefore his or her practices and decisions are also characterized of uh, honesty and transparency, and fear of God, yes, and respect to people, of course. Uh, so either I, I say that either the CEO is um, 
is religious or or the company operates in a religious place country uh, in which case the literature says that the ceo even if the ceo is not so religious then uh, he or she will have no other choice <laughs> but to comply with the uh, societies with the local societies and the local communities r- religious values and and, uh, and commitments so in this case the company will end up uh, making religious or, or faithful or, or transparent decisions whatsoever. So we understand here that it's not that um, it's not only tax benefits, it's not only the public image, but it goes actually uh, beyond, beyond that. Yeah. And, and, and another, another argument perhaps, if we operate, if a firm operates in a, in a, in a country which ha- whose society is very sensitive, for example, they, they give, the society, the individuals, and not the companies, the individuals. So if the society itself give, you know, people give, people care about others. Like in the US, for example, um, uh, my relatives in the US tell me that, that uh, in local communities, every, every household is responsible for uh, common, um, for taking care of s- certain streets, gardening, gardening and gardens here and there in, in, in squares, people take this initiative, they have this responsibility. So the, the, the firm itself has no other choice but to comply with all these direct in, and indirect uh, corporate, uh, uh, sorry, uh, philanthropic or um, uh, moral um, um, uh, values. Therefore, um, I, I wouldn't like to say that as many people perhaps believe it is black or white but uh, it is a uh, whole sp- different spectrum, a range of motives, indirect or direct, uh, to a larger or to a lesser extent, but they are there. And I'll be very happy to come to come back to you with this religiosity paper, which goes yes. further yes. into this. It digs a lot deeper into this um, and present it to you as soon as it is ready, hopefully. Yeah. Yes, thank you, George. Looking forward for that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Pak Surya, uh, very good questions. And maybe we can continue to the next uh, question from the meeting chat. Uh, next question is coming from uh, Professor Imam Gulzali from Tupanakur uh, University, our senior college. Uh, he write about the statistical aspects to do the uh, uh, equation. Uh, the logic you use like independent variable t minus one and t plus one. You use panel data, but the regression assumption you regard the cross section data and time series you assume constant. Why you not using random effect model or fixed effects model? Thank you very much for this. Actually, I, that is what I do. <laughs> it is just that it's not uh, um, well documented. In fact, um, not only have I um, use this, but also uh, I have accounted for endogeneity using the IAVV models. So it's all there. Uh, it's not, it is just that it's not well documented. And basically my main objective was not to, you know, get into that uh, statistical and econometric detail, but basically to make a discussion better for people to, you know, follow the, the main hypothesis. And, 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 and as, as I said earlier, um, due to time limitation, I didn't even, you know, um, cover the entire subject. So value relevance was not included in my presentation. So yes, it, just, it is all there, of course, yeah. Okay, Prof. Uh, maybe if I may to understand these uh, questions, and uh, the corporate philanthropy action will need more time to take effects. And it is uh, better if there is a lag uh, between independent variable and dependent variable. So uh, if, uh, maybe maybe I'm wrong, uh, but uh, maybe this is the meaning of the questions. Um, okay, uh, the next question are coming from Mr. Indra Rianto Disa. Uh, let me uh, read the questions. Uh, thank you f- uh, for the sharing, uh, Prof. Yadridis. I have permission to ask. The motivation for giving companies uh, will be very wise. You mentioned that in companies that face litigation risk under regulatory oversight tend to do more charity. Does this one motive build a positive impression of gaining short-term legitimacy rather than building long-term value? 
Uh, please. Uh, yes. Um, well, what I've read in the literature, uh, you know that this was not uh, the, the objective of my study. It was just a variable used, of course, as a, another explanatory variable. But um, uh, while writing my this paper, I did I did go through papers that uh, talked about this quite extensively, as a matter of fact. And what I found and what impressed me, because to be honest, uh, till that time, uh, the, that you know this had never occurred to my mind. So I was very impressed, as a matter of fact. So it's better. It's basically um, more related to uh, gaining some short-term legitimacy. So um, what the literature says basically is that firms that uh, face not only litigation costs, but it goes a bit one step forward, and it says the literature says firms with contingent liabilities in general. Okay, with contingent liabilities in general, uh, tend to to give more to um, influence to positively influence. Uh, the specific parties' um, perceptions and evaluation. So if it is about litigation costs specifically, the respective party would be the judge and the, and the jury. And of course, the public opinion. Let us make no mistake, the public opinion can to a certain extent influence the jury as well, right? As well. Therefore, um, what I've, well, my understanding out of reading the literature is basically mostly related to gaining short-term legitimacy, just to um, uh, resolve this problem and uh, at the lowest cost, at the lower cost possible for them, not uh, just building long-term value, especially for those that have significant uh, litigation costs, if this is the question. Okay, uh, thank you, Prof. Um, maybe I, I will... Uh... I invite all the participants that would like to directly ask the question to the prof. This is a golden opportunity to make direct interaction with the prof after this. Uh, okay, we have uh, already two uh, participants here. The first one is uh, Mr. Fuad. Please, Mr. Fuad. Uh, Mr. Fuad, uh, you can. Uh, raise the question. Um, uh, if there is no response yet, maybe I hand over to Ibu Siti Mutmaina. Ibu Siti Mutmaina. Uh, still mute. Still mute. Oh. Uh, either Mr. Fuad and uh, Ibu Siti Mutmaina already raised the hand. Uh, so I give the opportunity, um, Mr. Fuad, <coughs> if you are available uh, <coughs> to ask the question directly to the prof. Um, yes, Mr. Fuad, still mute. Yeah, uh, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. No, okay. <coughs> All right, thank you very much, Babuji. Hi, Joss. Uh, it's nice to see you here. Uh, so I have two questions. One is related to the uh, in-kind uh, in -kind contribution and another is regarding the research publication because some of the audience in the seminar are from the uh, PhD students. Uh, so uh, the first question is related to the uh, in-kind contribution. So I think one of the important drawbacks of the in-kind contribution is the uh, difficulty to accurately quantify the in-kind contribution in monetary terms. Right. Uh, so how did you deal with this uh, issue, Joss? So that would be my first question. And secondly, is that, so this is very... from submitting this article until the final uh, publication. Uh, pu uh, publication. So how long uh, did it take uh, for you to, uh, for, for, for this whole process? All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, Joss. Uh, Babuji, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, with respect to in-kind contributions, um, and in general, with respect to corporate giving uh, variables, um, actually, uh, I, I got them from databases like uh, USA Corporate Directory and uh, the ones that I mentioned at the start of the presentation, 
which were quite a few basically. And this is why I used them um, so many different databases for this, just to make sure that um, the data that I get is um, credible. So I used corporate giving directory, giving USA, and third, national directory of corporate giving. So I just got them basically uh, from the database. Um, so um, with respect to how long it took for this paper to get published, actually it was sent on in, in July, 2014, and it was finally published in March, 2015. Um, so from July, 2014 to March, 2015, so about uh, one and a half years and a bit more. Um, but uh, it depends on, uh, on the reviewers. Sometimes reviewers take a lot of time to, to, uh, to review the paper. I sent the paper, for example, to the British Accounting Review last October, and I'm still waiting for the reviewers. Uh, so it depends. In the International Review of Financial Analysis, the uh, journal that I'm an associate editor, whenever I handle the paper sent to me by the uh, editor-in-chief, by the editor-in-chief, I actually asked the reviewers to give me back their comments within two months and no more. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a process, I guess, I guess. Okay, uh, thank you for the response, uh, Prof. Uh, Mr. Piot, still mute. Uh, okay, Mr. Piot, any Abuji. reply? Yeah. Uh, yes, no, uh, just just uh, text me that he would like, to, he, he had another meeting coming up and the interview, the meeting started three minutes ago and he is already late for this. Okay. Uh, so maybe... Uh, it's basically, uh, thank, thank you very much for this. It's basically a, a colleague has applied for a post at the university and I'm one of the panel members that are examining the interview. So uh, thank you very much for this. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, please Victoria. do, uh, everybody, yes. any, anyone that would like to um, ask further questions, please feel free to. Okay. Okay, Prof. Okay. Uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, George Iatridis for the wonderful uh, time and to share the knowledge uh, to us. Uh, maybe before we end this session, we would like to take a picture together. Uh, for the participant, uh, please uh, turn on your camera and we will take the uh, photo picture session together. Okay, from the committee, uh, are you ready to take the picture, Mr. <coughs> Sofa? Okay. One, two, three. Okay, okay. finish. Sudah? Okay, finish. Okay, finish. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, Prof. Uh, Yatritis cannot uh, together with us uh, any longer because he has uh, a meeting right now. Uh, uh, once again, uh, uh, I would like to thank to Prof. Iatridis for the wonderful session uh, with us. Ah, uh, Prof. Iatridis, yes. The, li the line, the connection was cut off, sorry. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, thank you, Prof. Iatridis, for the wonderful uh, session uh, with us. And if I have uh, some <clears throat> uh, what is that? Uh, lack of uh, service to you know, all participants. Uh, I would like to apologize. And also, uh, Prof. Adetis, I hope that we can uh, meet again in the next time yeah? uh, with the uh, develop more collaboration uh, among us. And I believe that uh, participants here uh, still would like to know more about uh, the topic area of your research. And as you mentioned, it is so very welcome to all the participants to uh, get in touch uh, by email uh, to the uh, prop Yatridis. 
Oh, what's more, uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Iatridis. And I will hand over back to Mbak Witi. Mbak Witi, please. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. George and Mr. Pujarto for the greatest uh, seminar today. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for all the participation uh, participant as well for the day like that. Um, it's expand our knowledge especially about uh, corporate philanthropy actually so finally uh, that's last agenda that's the last agenda so but the last agenda is closing and prayer for closing the program let's recite alhamdulillah together uh, Okay, and finally, from the deepest of my heart, I do apologize uh, for my mistakes in presenting this event. Thank you so much uh, for your kind attention, and thank you so much. See you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your invitation. Thank you, for your yes, attention. Thank you. Thank you, thank very, you. Much thank you very much. Of thank you very much to all the participants. Thank you. Uh, Bapak Ibu jangan lupa untuk mengisi attendance list ya. Um, kami akan mengirim e sertifikat berdasarkan uh, pengisian dari uh, Google Form di attendance list. Uh, kami akan olah secepat mungkin uh, dalam waktu 24 jam nanti akan kirim uh, melalui link uh, baik di grup maupun di email masing-masing. Nah, terima kasih banyak Bapak Ibu atas partisipasinya mengikuti seri webinar dan insya Allah kita akan mengadakan seri webinar berikutnya akan kita umumkan lebih lanjut. Sekali lagi terima kasih atas partisipasinya dan mohon maaf jika ada kekurangan. Terima kasih Bendira. Ini masih di mute kayaknya. Matur nuwun, matur nuwun. Prof. Imam, Matur Nuhun, Prof. Imam. Teman-teman Matur Nuhun, semuanya terima kasih.
patokaan matego tego gorokan sayang 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 si patokaan matego tego gorokan sayang sako mangemo tanah man jauh mangemo mile lek lako sayang sako mangemo tanah man Patukaan, matego, ego, gorokan, 